notice, notice of public meeting of the City Commission of the City of Brownsville. Pursuant to Chapter 551, Title V of the Texas Government Code, the Texas Open Meetings Act, notice is hereby given to the City Commission of the City of Brownsville, Texas, in accordance with Article 5, Section 12 of the Charter of said city, will convene an executive session and a regular meeting on Tuesday, November the 6, 2012, at 5.20 p.m. and 6 p.m. in the Commission Chambers on the second floor of Brownsville City Hall, located at 1001 East Elizabeth Street, Brownsville, Cameron County, Texas. Executive Session Item A, Consultation with Attorney Pursuant to Texas Government Code Section 551.071-1A regarding reasonably contemplated litigation and pursuant to the Texas Government Code 551.0712 on a matter in which the duty of the attorney to the governmental body under the Texas Disciplinary Rules of Professional Conduct of the State Bar of Texas clearly conflicts with the duties <coughs> under Chapter 551 of the Texas Government Code. Executive Session Item B, Consultation with Attorney Pursuant to Texas Government Code Section 551071A regarding reasonably contemplated litigation and pursuant to the Texas Government Code 551.0712 on, on a matter in which the duty of the attorney to the governmental body under the Texas Disciplinary Rules of Professional Conduct of the State Bar of Texas clearly conflicts with the duties under Chapter 551 of the Texas Government Code. Executive Session Item C. Consultation with attorney regarding real estate transaction pursuant to sections 551.071 and 551.072 of the Texas Government Code. Mayor, I move we go into executive session. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. <coughs> Okay, uh, <clears throat> Estella, it's six o'clock. Yes, sir. Pledge of Allegiance. Everybody stand up for the pledge. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag, I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state under God, one individual. Okay, tonight we will have the invocation by Pastor Jesus Briseño. Gracias. Oremos. Eh, señor, en esta tarde queremos pedirte muy en especial por un día especial como hoy, día de votación en Estados Unidos. Pedimos que tú estés con cada uno de los que trabajan en el conteo, en las urnas de votos, y que todo se haga justa y equitativamente por toda nuestra nación, en cada ciudad, en cada estado, en cada condado, donde esto se está llevando a cabo. Tú sabes quién será el futuro presidente de nuestra nación, y te pedimos de antemano que tú seas con esta persona que tú le ayudes a tomar las decisiones correctas, que le des sabiduría para trabajar con su equipo 
con todo el equipo presidencial con el cual estará trabajando el futuro tiempo. Señor, también específicamente por nuestro mayor de nuestra ciudad, por cada representante aquí presente, por cada comisionado, por cada uno de los que trabajan directa o indirectamente en nuestra ciudad, te pedimos que tú les ayudes también. Te pedimos por los planes, por los proyectos que tienen para la ciudad de Bronzeville, que se lleven a cabo y que se ejecuten de la mejor manera. Dale sabiduría, dale gracia, dale favor. Te pido por cada una de sus familias que también forman parte integral de todo este trabajo que ellos desarrollan cada día para nuestra comunidad y para el mejor desarrollo y desempleo, desempleo de la misma. Gracias por sus vidas, síguelos bendiciendo. Queremos que Bronzeville mejore en todas las áreas y para ellos necesitamos un buen equipo de trabajo como el que tenemos hoy representado aquí presente. Muchas gracias por cada uno de ellos, Señor, y pedimos que tú los bendigas, que el trabajo de sus manos, que donde quiera que estén, tú los ayudes, los guardes y los protejas, y sobre todo que Bronzeville se distinga de todas otras ciudades. Gracias por sus vidas, darles de tu bendición, guía sus pasos en todas las decisiones que tengan que tomar sobre todo que sus vidas sean bendecidas. Bendice Bronzeville, bendice nuestra nación, en el nombre de Jesús te lo pido. Amén. Ok, so I think it's action A. Action A. Item A on action of items discussed in executive session. Action to proceed as advised by legal counsel. I'll entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item B, action to proceed as advised by legal counsel. Move to table. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item C. Consideration and action on sale of real property described as blocks 128, 129, 130, 135, 136, and 137 of the Brownsville Original Town Site. Move the table. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Mayor's activity report. Um, real briefly, but I do want to congratulate uh, each and every citizen of the city of Brownsville for coming in first place on healthy communities. Um, we partnered up with BISD, the, the university, uh, and with a multitude of other groups. And I want to tell you that, um, which has always been my feeling, that when Brownsville can, wants to set out to do something, they can do it. And so I congratulate uh, the city. Um, there will be more publicity on that uh, with HEB. And um, I just can't thank you enough for all the people that participated and, um, and contributed. Um, keep the good, keep the good uh, faith in our good city of Brownsville. Commissioners? I would, uh, I would like to um, thank everyone that uh, was on the planning team for the Enciclovia that happened this past Sunday, particularly the health department. Um, and all of the managers of our four reclovias, including um, School of Public Health, Healthy Communities, UTB, um, TSC, Department of Health and Human Performance, and the River Rockets, who were the managers of the reclovias. <coughs> we had uh, 4,000 people in the streets, anywhere from Dean Porter Park to Lincoln Park on Sunday and had to cut it short because of the thunderstorm, but there were still people driving in and very disappointed that we were turning them away um, because we had to stop an hour early from the rain. To give an idea of, uh, I would also like to extend a great, great thanks to um, the police department and the traffic department. Y'all worked really, really hard and you also um, were so helpful and cooperative in our <coughs> planning sessions. And, um, and, and we thank you for that. And the many volunteers that we had, we had our debriefing session this morning and turned out um, that we had an overwhelmingly positive experience. Many of uh, the few negatives that we did hear were things that they wanted more of, like more music or more bikes or something of that nature. To give a few statistics, um, Bike, Bike Texas was here with their trailer full of 45 bikes. They rented for free those bikes three times over <coughs> during the Ciclovia, and everyone except for one person that requested a bike during the event eventually got a bike. Um, so they were able to service the entire Ciclovia. 
Uh, the other thing is that they, they gave out 2,000 safety lights to our children throughout the event. And uh, TxDOT in the adjacent booth gave out an additional five to 600 safety lights and uh, left us with even more than that to use at our different events um, as, the, as the year goes on. So we had some really good partners from outside of Brownsville as well. Um, do we have pictures, Judy? We have a couple pictures to share with folks. Can you go back there? The one in the middle was one of our favorites. This was a young woman who's handicapped, and her father was pushing her in a wheelchair, and she was just delighted. And her smile was perhaps the brightest there. I would also add that there were eight, I counted them, city department heads, including, uh, and not, that is not including Commissioner Villarreal, myself, and the mayor on bikes in the streets among the people this weekend on Sunday. And it was a delight to see all of the department heads enjoying the event. Thank you, Commissioner. And I do want to take a, a special thanks to Bike Texas. Um, they were really wonderful. As a matter of fact, um, uh, I forgot. Um, and I thought, I thought my picture was going to come out there in the elders. Um, <laughs> uh, and I'm glad it didn't. It's, but, it's, but it's one of my close friends. <laughs> um, they did leave me a, a box of lights uh, for the commissioners. And I forgot to bring it. So uh, I got, you know, I forgot, guys. But I'll bring it, I'll bring it next week <laughs> in case you all want some or come by the office. But anyway, they were, they were spectacular. And so I do want to thank them for any other commissioners have any reports? Just for the live viewing audience that we have one more hour to go before they close the polls. So if anybody hasn't gone out to vote, I'm going to do so at this time. Yeah. I think he's trying to get rid of the public. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, now, do, you do have 50 minutes to vote. Um, and I, I understand there's record turnout. Um, so we'll try to kind of push this meeting along so you guys can go listen to the election results. OK. Uh, employee, employee of the month. Employee of the month. Mayor, members of the commission, in the spirit of Cyclovia and our wellness programs, we felt it deserving and an honor to uh, present Judy Hernandez, our wellness coordinator, with the employee of the month for November. Well, we're going to present her. We got two employees of the month, her and her babies. So. <laughs> Maybe we'll be able to see this film sometime in the future. As you know, Judy has worked with us, uh, and it's been two and a half years since she's been with us. It's hard to believe that it's been true. It's true that she's been here two and a half years. Time flies when you're having fun and wellness. Uh, she's worked on uh, bi uh, the binational uh, inaugural ceremonies, uh, coordinating with the Biggest Loser programs, uh, uh, you name it, the Guinness World Records uh, programs, uh, Zumba class, and all those classes that have put the Browns on the map as far as our wellness and our, and our ability to gather our community to involve themselves in these wonderful events. Uh, of course, Judy works with the health department. She's been there throughout her process. She was, for the first few months, she was uh, administrative tech, and then uh, in a fast pace, became our wellness, took on the challenge of being the coordinator, and she's done very well for us, obviously. So uh, we thank her so much for what she's done, and she is the employee. We offer her the plaque. Uh, we only have one watch. We'll give you a watch later, six months from now. <laughs> and uh, here's a pen. Here's a And Judy, and Judy, you want to say a couple of words? Yes, she does, but she is eligible for the Employee of the Year in our banquet in December as well. Okay. And everybody is willing to take her to lunch every day, so don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> Commission Mayor, thank you so much for this opportunity, and uh, Mr. Kavler as well. It's been an honor to work for the City of Brownsville for two and a half years. Um, I've gone through so many experiences of coordinating so many events. 
Uh, it's just been a great honor to, to provide such a great service to the citizens of Brownsville. So I thank you for the opportunity. Well, you, job well Sorry. done and keep smiling, okay? Thank you. <laughs> Agenda item number four, consent agendas, A through D. To approve. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item number five, consideration and action to appoint a member to the Brownsville Public Utilities Board. I mean, oh. Mayor, we have one, Mayor Commissioner, we have one appointment, uh, Mr. Ramon Hinojosa, who uh, was elected to the TSC Board and he's not eligible for reappointment. He has served his term. Uh, and we are filling in that vacancy. We have the viable candidates and uh, five app viable applicants there. Uh, you have the uh, applications in your packet. They're all willing to serve. And it's the decision of the commission as to who gets appointed. I make I a motion. Oh, go ahead. I make a motion to appoint uh, Ms. Rosemary Martinez. She has a good uh, economic background, business background, and considering the direction that PUB is going with some major projects, I think that she'd make a really good fit. Any seconds? Any seconds? Okay. Um, any other motions? I would like to make a motion to approve Noemi Garcia. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. They're all grouped. I, I personally reviewed all the uh, uh, applications and I want to thank each and every one of them because they're all very well qualified and uh, I there will be some more openings coming up next year uh, and we'll certainly consider them and thank them very much for their interest in this uh, appointment thank you sir item number six consideration and action to appoint or reappoint four members of the Brownsville Metro Transit Advisory Committee Hi, Norma. Good evening. Um, commissioners, we've got uh, three members that are seeking reappointment, and we've got one um, new member that is seeking an appointment um, at this point. Uh, we've got the members seeking the reappointment are Ms. Viola Carey, Mr. Daniel Lenz, and Mr. Julian Lopez. How many terms have they served? Um, I believe they've all served at least two terms or more. And do we have any other applicants that are interested? Um, no, the only new applicant that we've received has been Ms. Teresa Saldiva. That's my understanding. Have we, um, it's been on the, the city website? Right. Address. Yeah. I apologize for not having actively recruited, mm -hmm. and so I would like to, maybe we can table this so that we can um, any of the other commissioners as well to recruit possibly um, new um, you have you have three members that are seeking reappointment right? right and all three if I recall have done what my review was an excellent job and right. have always attended and shown, and shown great interest right their um, attendance is okay so because you got four four availabilities um, actually yeah actually I've got right now uh, um, we've got just one that is active, so we would have six. So after these, we're still going to have two more appointments. Okay. Oh, okay. The one thing that I am seeing here on this chart is that the one appointment, no, there is a district two, right? Yeah, there's one. What there's am I? Two, two district one and three district three and one district two. Right, <laughs> right now, the ones that are uh, seeking um, the appointments are, we've got one for district one, which is uh, Ms. Viola Carey. Uh, one for, uh, we've got two under District 3, Mr. Daniel Lenz and Mr. Lopez. Um, we currently have Ms. Sylvia Berry that is not up for a reappointment uh, for District 2. And Teresa Saldiva would be uh, District 4. So we and have the two. People. We have four people who are interested and we have four openings. We have There's four. No, after these four positions, we're still going to have two more, the two at-large positions that are going to. Okay. Um, it would be great to see representation from District 4 and possibly 2, just because that's my favorite. <laughs> well, there, Ms. Uh, Ms. Saldiva is from District 4. Right. Okay. And she's one of the, the new ones? Yeah, she would be the new one. Oh, okay. 
If it pleases the commission, I'd, I'd make a motion to appoint uh, Mrs. Saldivar in place of uh, Sylvia Berry. She, she doesn't want to serve anymore? No, she is. She's, she, her, her position is not up. The only oh, okay. one. She's yeah. District 2's representation. What, what well, there's, there's, um, there's three reappointments. They're right. acting. Reappointments. And so there's how many slots available? There's a total three. of seven slots that are, uh, that, are, uh, that are available, six. Okay, because okay, so once even if we arguably reappoint the three and then put Ms. Saldivar, yeah. that would be four, so we would have one you more. You still have two, two, more, more. two more appointments. Two more. Okay. Yeah, and that's okay. what I'm saying. I said you, these boards have to kind of continue going, right. and if they're doing a good job, we might think about taking the four that are that you've suggested mm -hmm. uh, and then we still have two more and, that we and have two to more and then we'll all actively get a little bit more involved okay. in trying to I figure out make a also. motion then I'll do the okay. motion to appoint the slate the four as you have presented second. Uh, presented second okay all those in favor say aye aye, aye. motion carries thank you Norma okay. thank you Okay, we have public hearing. I have, I have a public hearing on uh, number seven, uh, public hearing in action on first reading on protested ordinance number 235-2012-605-CU, an ordinance allowing a conditional use permit to, sale, to sell on-premises alcohol for block 21 of El Jardin subdivision, share 19, located at 2115 Old Port Isabel Road. Mayor, we're we gonna ask that we table this again. We have okay. quite finished. <coughs> Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion's table. Item Pass. eight, public hearing and action on first reading of ordinance number 2012-1361-B, an ordinance to adopt a new single member district boundaries. And before you start, Ramita, you did circulate this to all the commissioners ahead of time? Yes, I okay. emailed Everybody, all the commissioners. Everybody's had a chance to take a look at it? I just couldn't get, uh, even for as much as I expanded it, I still couldn't get it up to, to, the, to the final lines. I went up on percentages on, 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 the, on the email. I, I took it up to 140% and I still couldn't get a, a clear visual on, on the lines on, on, this, on this particular map. Okay, on, uh, for District 1, the, the, the line is really, is really 14th Street here, except for population purposes. You had to take uh, a little bit of Boca Chica and, uh, and Paredes line is the line. So that's, that's that little, that's Paredes line right here. And this is Boca Chica. Um, <clears throat> and again, uh, I just want to clarify. So I mean, we don't have to go to a lot of discussion. I, th I think I sat with. I wanted to make sure that everybody got well represented. But uh, what I wanted to make sure is that this was in accordance with the guidelines that were given to us by uh, uh, the lawyer of out of San Antonio or something. Yes, uh, Mr. Loran Rolando Rios is our is our consultant on redistricting. So it falls within the legal. In other words, this. Districting, uh, there won't be any challenges from a legal standpoint. Right? No, 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 no. There's there's certain guidelines that I circulated to everybody. If you want, I'll go down those guidelines. No, no. Oh, well, I, uh, I know, maybe somebody that hadn't seen it, but I, I think every. I just want to make sure all the commissioners are fully aware, and we're and we're given ample opportunity to discuss this. Of course, of course. I met I met with just about everybody, um, and uh, and then we emailed it, circulated through email, and I, I didn't get any comments back. So that's why we put it on the agenda. Um, but I think. What, what the, uh, with, the, with the agreement that I heard from almost everybody was uh, that we wanted clear boundaries um, and, and not really something that, you know, you're on one side of the street and you're on, one, on the other side of the street, you're in one in district or another. Um, so we went through several kind of uh, versions of this map. And obviously when, you know, the guidelines say that you try to keep, obviously equal out the population and keep it under a 10% uh, Deviation. Deviation. Uh, but also, you know, I, uh, I, you know ge geographic boundaries have to be, you know, there has to be a reason for the geographic boundaries. Uh, so I, if you want, I'll go down the list, and I think we hit on all this with this map. So number one on this list is where possible, easily identifiable geographic boundaries should be followed. So what we did there is we, we took the expressway as a boundary. Uh, we took uh, Alton Glor, 281, Boca Chica. Um, and we put those as the significant boundaries in Brownsville. Um, and that's kind of where the result came, this, this result occurred. 
Communities of interest should be maintained in a single district where possible and attempts should be made to avoid splitting neighborhoods. Um, the biggest impact of the current, the, the current alignment of the districts is District 3 and District 4. Um, <clears throat> those, we're, we're proposing major changes to those. Um, however, I think that 3 and 4 meet that number 2, which is the communities of interest should stay together. Um, you know, downtown, uh, Rio Viejo, all, District 4 basically, I think, has very general, you know, the same interest in mind. Um, number three, to the extent possible, districts should be composed of whole voting precincts. You know, that was, uh, th that was also looked at. Uh, number four, although it is recognized that existing <coughs> districts will have to be altered to reflect new population, any districting plan should, to the extent possible, be based on existing districts. Um, <clears throat> you know, obviously that changed a little bit, uh, considering that we wanted to have clear boundaries. Um, but this all meets the, the, the regulations and, and the federal regulations. Number five, district must be configured <clears throat> so that they are relatively equal in total population. That's a deviation of 10%, which we meet that. <clears throat> Number six, the district should be compact and composed of contiguous territory. Um, compactness may contain a functional as well as, as well as geographical dimension. I think we meet that as well. Number seven, consideration may be given to the preservation of incumbent constituency relations by recognition of the residents of incumbents and their history in representing certain areas. Um, <clears throat> that, the only, the only one that, that's affected there is, uh, I believe, is uh, District 3. Um, I, you reside in District 3 and, and it's moving out um, current, in, in this plan. Uh, number eight, the plan should be narrowly tailored to avoid retrogression and the possession of racial minorities. We completely meet that. And number nine, the plan should not fragment a geographically compact minority community uh, under the Voting Rights Act. So we meet all that. Those, so we meet all the standards, um, and, and this plan has to, be, um, has to be adopted before the next election. So, uh, and this uh, federal government requires 60 days in order to approve. So it has to go through another, once you approve here, it goes through another process, federal process. Right. Okay, this is a public hearing. Does anybody have any comments? I was, can I say something real quick? I mean, I think we all understand the map, but I, I think that this is going to affect our constituents. So is it possible to maybe go over the color coding and let the, the public know what district is what? Commissioner, where the lines you, uh, are at? in lines with your, do you have something a little bit clearer? I know you do because you had, when, when I met with the, with the gentleman from San Antonio, there was, I'm sorry, I've, I've taken it up to 600% and I can't make. Yeah, we could definitely give you a, 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 <clears throat> a higher resolution. We'll put that on, on the website. At a higher resolution, I, I apologize for that, but, uh, no, but I, I didn't know like that. I didn't know that was that was a, a, an issue. If not, I would have. Well, I, no, in other words, when we spoke to the gentleman, from, I'm, I'm sorry, what's his name? Rolando Rios. Mr. Rios. When we spoke to Mr. Rios, one street can make a difference. I'm not. I'm not talking about politically. I'm talking about representation. Mm -hmm. When I was part, of the, I was part of the process 11 years ago, when when we went to single member district in the city. And five out of the seven representatives lived within a three block radius. Okay, so that's, that was the whole purpose of us going to district representation so that each one of us could live within our own corridor from the city and that part of town have its, its proper rep representation. So when I'm telling you, it's not, it's not to give you a hard time, it's that I need to see clearly where we're drawn. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make heads or tails out of my uh, my uh, western portion and I can't. Okay, um, well, like I said, I, I can get you a higher resolution image of this map, um, but but r really your boundary sits at at uh, 14th Street. I realize that, but when you do the boundary between District Four, District Three, and one in one particular section, I'm sorry, I can't I can't make heads or tails because I know I see Lindale, I see Ash, but everything in between I don't. I see Palm Boulevard. But there's key streets there in the middle that make, that honestly do make a difference. Okay. You know, when it comes to the boundaries that we have at our, I know that between District 1 and 4, when it came to the university, Camarillo and I would always, we wouldn't clash, we would just have a lot of concerns about, you know, one street made a difference in the, in the necessities and in the needs that we needed for our area. 
Okay, why don't we identify the district one is in what color? In yellow. Okay. Uh, district two is in red. Uh, district three is in blue, and district four is in green. Okay. And uh, I mean, and, and I'm willing to answer any questions that you might have. Uh, you know, we, we try to keep it all as, you know, to, to address your question, Commissioner Longoria, is, uh, you know, I think District 1, although you're adding a little bit, uh, it's still very, the interest among that community is very similar to the rest of your district. Um, so, the, and, and we drew that line based on that. Okay. Um, and anyone else have a public comment? I, I just have a, a couple comments. I mean, ideally, for me, I'd, I'd like to keep what I already have and expand, but I'm not always going to be here, and I know this is a, should be in the interest of the city and the constituents, so I understand what I'm losing and what I'm gaining. What doesn't make sense to me is that peninsula on the west, uh, which is La Galaxia and I believe La Lomita, uh, I do understand the constraints and the deviation that you have to consider and why you're putting it there, but uh, it almost kind of isolates them from the rest of their district. In yeah, the and, and, and that was, uh, mm -hmm. if, that had to be, if, if District 4 cuts along, my, the, original, the original boundary to me was, was Alton Glore when we first studied it. Uh, but as I said in, in our meetings, you know, uh, it really pushed the deviation to 25%. But when I studied uh, it with Mr. Rios, by him keeping Galaxia and with the the Valley in the Valley Inn and Country Club, he was balanced out because there is that in other words, there was a deviation there where District Three was cutting in to the Valley and Country Club on that on that particular boundary. We we and and, and that is true. Uh, the first the first version of this map we had that. However, when we went back and we said, you know what, let's try to get a map with clearly defined boundaries, this is, this is what we came up with because the expressway is really a, the boundary. It should really be the boundary between mm -hmm. east and west. Um, and I mean, if, if that, I mean, this is my decision, this is your decision. But um, to have clear, clear line boundaries, we decided the expressway was the boundary. Uh, originally, District 3 kind of leaked into here and picked up a little bit of this <coughs> um, and, and you know, we were trying to meet the, 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 the wishes of the commission uh, to have those defined boundaries, clearly defined boundaries. Was that's that's, that's why, I, why I asked, I yeah, have you had ample opportunity to discuss all this with all the commissioners? Um, of course. I mean, okay. uh, you yeah. know, we, we emailed yeah. and I called a couple times. And sure. Uh, no, I mean, I had, I had ample time to, to yeah. visit with you and I told you exactly what, you know, uh, make sure the guidelines are followed. So Anybody that, else have public comment? Move to close. I, oh, well, I just said um, I, I like this much better than the first version because of the clear boundaries. M my only question, and I think you answered it, was the same as John's, which was that peninsula. Why doesn't the green go all the way to the river? It, it, initially, we had, we had, this is Alton Glore right here, and I had said, okay, everything north of Alton Glore is in District 3. Um, however, um, you have to keep census tracts <coughs> in, in, in also in, in, you can't split the census tract. So the best way, and if you put it all in District 4, our deviation would have been 25%. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, well, that was so the, District 4 would have been overly populated. Uh, and therefore, the easiest thing to, to, the easiest boundary that I found was 281. Um, uh, you know, it is, you know, the interest are maybe a little different than the rest of District 3. Did Mr. Rios' opinion concur with yours? Yes. When you did yes. that? Yes, of course. He, he, we looked at it and we said, you know, the the other the other boundary that we could have caught could have cut across was Morrison Road, and everything north sit, sit in in. Uh, but then you're splitting the census tract, and you can't do that. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, you know, <coughs> unfortunately that's kind of the way the easiest way it it, it, it happens. So. Right. Anyone else in the audience? Anyone else in the commissioners? Anything else? I mean, I'm very satisfied with the way District 2 was cut. It's a very definitive line, and it wasn't like it was anything was being removed from my district other than a small portion um, that's going to go to Rick. Uh, that area has had a lot of maintenance recently. We repaved everything and whatnot. And so that would be the Apollo, Armstrong, 
space area. And so that, you know, I think they're in good hands with Rick, but, you know, just to, to show that it's not a political, you know, line that we're kind of drawing because, you know, I've invested a lot of time and energy. It, it's it's to, to clear the boundaries, but with all due respect, there's a lot of very important representation that needs to be distinguished. And those are in areas that don't get as much as attention, but need just as much work. And so I think that's something that we have to consider regardless of the numbers and really, really focus on because the one thing that would be pushing us backwards is to forget about people. And that's... I, I think overall this, this will help the citizens, it'll help you, and it'll be able to say, okay, you know, any, right. you'll be able to say, if anybody asks you, you know, wh who, are you my representative or not, you'll say, well, are you north or south of Boca Chica? Or are you east or west of the expressway? Or are you north or south of Alton Glor? I mean, that's just yeah. simple. I, you know, right. so. Actually, Romito, we, like I said, we went through a series yeah. of things, and, and, and this seems to be a pretty <laughs> adequate map. But again, I will entertain a motion to Can close, close public. public hearing. Okay. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Somebody yeah, somebody oh. Somebody's raised. Oh. Oh. Here, step up. Come up here. Come here, son. Go Move ahead. to reopen public hearing. <laughs> <laughs> For the it's record, not just about us. I'm Christian Diaz, and sure. uh, this sounds like a really, really, really big decision that uh, kind of takes a professor or a professional who actually specializes in this. And uh, I mean, I mean, I think a second opinion is kind of warranted here. I mean, it seems like you're all really concerned, and it sounds like something someone has to specialize especially on to be wary of. So I think. Uh, I mean, and your first name, sir? Christian Diaz. My Christian, first name no, is Christian. Christian, what happens is the expert is the lawyers that we hire uh, who have all the knowledge with regards to what are the, what are the criteria that has to be gotten. And if you noticed, this, this conversation has been going on for some period of time, is that we do, in other words, that little peninsula that Commissioner Barrell is talking about, I think that was a concern of all of us at one time, but then it would, that variance would create right there, would create an imbalance in so far as in so far as the number of people are in that district so it's not this is not our first you know time that we've looked at it I think everybody that's why I kept saying and I want the public to know that this department and the lawyer in San Antonio has been through this several times with us to be frank I don't I truly don't understand it it's beyond me uh, I'm not gonna try and you know figure it out in five minutes but uh, my point was that it seems like something you guys are still kind of, well, you know, hesitant about, and I would. Well, like I was just answering your point as far as you know, as far as an expert, we have we have consulted. Oh yeah, that. absolutely, yeah. No, and not only him, but also oh. the, the the lawyer in San Antonio who's addressed this problem and and worked with us on previous occasions. Of so course. it's not like it's not like we're just kind of making it up. Yeah, I think we're just. Oh no, I didn't think that. Okay. the information to the public uh, as best as we can. So maybe we can just find a way to put the map on the website, maybe contact the Herald so that they can do a story, just to get people more informed. Yes, we all know, and we all had an opportunity to work with you, and I appreciate it. I think this is, this is great. It makes it you know, more fair and, and even, but the community needs to know who potentially could become their commissioner and what district they could potentially reside in. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree there's, a, there's an educational component to this once the district lines do change. But we really can't start that until it's adopted. So, sure. so at this point, you know, this is where we'll go and, and get, you know. As part of the public, I'm telling you, I'm really overwhelmed by that. It sound, it just looks like something I just like popped open in an encyclopedia, and I wouldn't even know what to do with it, kind of deal. So, <laughs> if you want to educate the public, I'll tell you right now, like, you, you have a job to do. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. And you can't expect the public to come and participate in a public hearing if they don't know anything about it. That's just, I'm done. That's my two cents. Okay. Move to close public hearing. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. People are always Now it's action. <coughs> do, we, do I have a motion? Representation is more important. Than Move to approve. Second. All those in oh. favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. And I will get you a high resolution. Please. Item 9, public comment period.
Item number 10, consideration and action on resolution number 2012-095 to approve an amended plan of finance to issue certificates of obligation to finance the construction and acquisition of certain capital improvement projects and authorizing the city staff and professional advisors to prepare and distribute all documents and take all actions deemed necessary in connection with preparing for the issuance of such obligations, including the selection of underwriters. Honorable Mayor, members of the City Commission, on October the 16th, you approved a uh, plan of finance to issue $11,831,000 for, uh, for CEOs on various projects. The handout that's being uh, handed to you right now, you, you can turn to page two of five, if, uh, if you could. And that particular schedule shows uh, uh, the uh, the uh, CEOs or the plan of finance that were approved on not only on the 16th but also the amendments that were added tonight. Um, one of the areas that uh, on page 205 you'll see a, the hangar for the airport that's listed as a taxable certificate and that's because it's going to be used for private use. Since then we are amending this to include two items and that's at the very bottom on line 24 and line 25 which includes the uh, Brownsville Metro Maintenance Yard Building, which is in uh, need of uh, great repair. It's kind of a safety issue in that building that needs to get rehab or repaired. And we also have, we added the uh, local share for the construction of a shelter dome. So those two items that we're adding tonight, which is 1225000 if you add the 625000 the 600000 uh, you add those, the total amount of the amendment would be uh, one million two twenty-five plus the previous one of eleven million eight thirty-one will give you a a, a a plan of finance to issue thirteen million fifty-six thousand in certificates of obligation. Uh, if you go back to page four or five, uh, it shows the, uh, the the effect of of, of this particular issues issuance that we'll have. If you look on on column L of uh, line. 11, you'll see that the uh, tax rate increase, tax rate that will service the, uh, uh, it, that's the interest in sinking fund, which is debt service fund, will go from 25, 13 cents to 26, 44 cents, which is a, a small amount compared to what we're, we'll be issuing. But if you look on column C, column C gives you the net assessed valuation growth. In 2013, we had a growth of 3.48%. Uh, 2014, we estimate two and a half, 215, 2015, two percent, and so forth. Uh, by by, we obviously we need some growth along the way uh, with the new issuance. Um, and then on page five of five gives you the uh, calendar of events or the timetable. Um, they will, we're looking at December 26 as the closing date uh, when we actually we get get our money for the certificates. We uh, obviously we recommend that you approve. Uh, uh, this amended uh, plan of finance tonight. It's an action item. Would you approve? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, Pete. Thank you. You got the next one. <clears throat> item 11, consideration and action on resolution number 2012-096 to authorize publication of notice of intention to issue certificates of obligation to renovate, repair, and improve the Brownsville Metro Maintenance Yard Building and fund the city's share to construct an emergency shelter dome. Honorable Mayor, members of the City Commission, this uh, resolution authorizes us to uh, publish a notice of intention to issue this certificate of obligation. Um, and one publication will appear on November the 9th and the second one on November the 16th. Uh, we recommend that you adopt this resolution. Move, move to approve. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Thank you. Aye. Motion carries. Item 12, <coughs> consideration and action on resolution number 2012-097 to approve an interlocal agreement between the City of Brownsville and Topeka Metropolitan Transit Authority to purchase transit buses. City Commission, uh, Brownsville Metro is requesting the consent from the City Commission to uh, authorize an agreement between the City of Brownsville and uh, the MTA uh, to purchase some ter uh, transit buses. This is going to be done under an interlocal agreement that purchase an interlocal purchasing agreement that we have in place, and uh, they will be purchasing uh, ten of the options that are available. 
Under approved. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Norman. Item 13, consideration and action to authorize the acceptance and expenditure of the Texas Department of Public Safety, Department of Homeland Security, FEMA Grant Programs Directorate of Fiscal Year 2012, Homeland Security Grant Program, State Homeland Security Program, and awarded to the Brownsville Office of Emergency Management and Homeland Security in the amount of $30,000. Honorable Mayor Commissioners, this is a competitive regional grant. There is no local fund or local match required for this particular grant. Um, this grant was available to all eligible jurisdictions within Cameron, Hidalgo, and Willacy County. Um, this particular grant was earmarked as enhancement of regional response teams. Uh, the equipment that will be purchased under this grant is CBRNE, which is, stands for Chemical, Biological, Radiological, Nuclear, and Explosives or Enhanced Conventional Weapons. And this is basically personal protective equipment for Brownsville Police Department SWAT team and tactical team members. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Item 14, consideration and action to authorize the acceptance and expenditure of the Texas Department of Public Safety, Texas Division of Emergency Management, Fiscal Year 2012 Emergency Management Performance Grant, awarded to the Brownsville Office of Emergency Management and Homeland Security in the amount of $55,342.49. Honorable Mayor, Commissioners, this is also a statewide competitive grant. This grant is allocated through the federal government. This is funded by uh, Congress as a separate appropriation, and I'll get to that in just a moment. Uh, but this grant here locally is utilized to partially reimburse expenditures from budget category 01303, which is emergency management, uh, and it's to reimburse for some of the administrative expenses utilized by the emergency management office. Uh, you will note that this is listed as fiscal year 2012. The grant cycle that you're approving tonight is for expenditures from October the 1st of 2011 through September the 30th of 2012. The federal government has a tendency to be a little bit late when they pass this particular appropriation. So we have already expended the funds and this will be partial reimbursement for what was spent last fiscal year. Motion to approve. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Thank Item you. 15, consideration and action to approve the acceptance of a grant from the Texas Department of State Health Services to the Brownsville Fire Department in the amount of $15,600. Honorable Mayor, uh, Commissioners, you have before you uh, a grant application that we received to, uh, for the purchase of 12 AEDs to replace our old ones on our fire trucks for, uh, for a grant total of $15,600 plus a match of 50 cents to a dollar for us. We ask for your approval on this so we can uh, replace those AEDs in the fire trucks. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 16 consideration and action to award a term contract for the purchase and delivery of bunker gear. Honorable Mayor, Commissioners, you have before you uh, the responsive bidder of Casco Industries to provide us with bunker coats and, bun and bunker pants. Uh, they were uh, the uh, responsive bidder on this contract for the bun bunker gear for our firefighters. It was bound tree? No, you're talking bunker gear. We're talking about not, not medical supplies. Bunker gears for what, bombs? The, 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 the coat and the pants that we use to go into a fire and oh. be able to fight the fire. That heavy stuff that we wear, it protects us from the fire, basically. It's not fireproof, but it does protect us. Motion to approve? Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 17, consideration and action to award a term contract for medical supplies for use by the EMS division of the Brownsville Fire Department. Honorable Mayor, Commissioners, you have before you the responsive low bidder of uh, Bountry. They came in about $700 lower on their price bids of the medical supplies to be provided for our EMS services uh, to the citizens. Move to approve. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you Chief. Chief. Item 18. Consideration and action to award a term contract for print material services for the Brownsville Public Library System. Honorable Mayor, Commissioners, at the request of the library system, the purchasing department solicited formal seal proposals for library materials for the library system. That includes print materials and audiovisual items. 
The solicitation was advertised twice in the Brownsville Herald back on August 12th and 19th and was posted on the Purchasing Department's website in the Texas bid system. The number of vendors that received the notice regarding the solicitation was 114. The number who accessed the bid package was 46. Responses were received on September 5th. A total of four vendors responded to the solicitation request. Those were Children's Plus Incorporated, Permabound Books, Scholastic Library Publishing, and Baker and Taylor. The evaluation committee met on Monday, September 24th regarding the evaluation process and afterwards reviewed and scored each proposal. The highest ranked firm was determined to be Baker and Taylor of Charlotte, North Carolina. The evaluation committee recommends the award of a term contract for the library collection materials to Baker and Taylor with a targeted commencement date upon commission approval and for three years thereafter with the possibility of two years uh, extended if the city commission wishes to do so. <coughs> Funding for the contract is available for the library system's standard 710 book budget. Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank, Thank you, Jerry. You. Item 19, consideration and action to award a term contract for uniforms for use by the Brazil Police Department. Mayor, Honorable Commission, I have four items today. The first item is going to be the police clothing contract. Uh, we solicited bids for, uh, it's basically uniforms and about 50 other items that are associated with our uniforms. Uh, the lowest bidder came in as Gauls, and this, like I said, this is a three-year contract. Uh, we're fully funded through our current budget uh, to pay for these items, and I'm requesting your approval. Move to approve. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 20, consideration and action to award a contract for the purchase, delivery, and installation of audio, video, recording equipment, hardware, and software, and 10 mobile computers for the Brownsville Police Department. Honorable Mayor, uh, Commission, I apologize. This should be after uh, agenda item number 22. We're requesting to purchase tw uh, 10 more police vehicles under a, a current contract. This basically is just the uh, audio and uh, video equipment that's associated with the units. This is a DR purchase. No quotes are necessary. Okay, Commissioner. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 21, consideration and action to award a contract for the purchase and delivery of 10 sedan vehicles for the Brownsville Police Department. Honorable Mayor, City Commission, this is the purchase of sedan vehicles for our CAD flight, uh, uh, fleet, uh, its investigators. Uh, we're excited about this. We worked with the city manager. Our fleet is still in decent shape, and what we're going to be doing is transferring our current fleet to uh, Mr. Kabler, and he's going to be distributing it out. We're trying to work with the city as far as covering costs. The cost for, and this is, we're excited about this because it's going through Tipton Ford, a local vendor. Uh, the funding is federal forfeiture, not through city funds. So uh, we're excited about that. And so uh, we're recycling them, we're not getting any new? No, but we're recycling, and uh, the, the units that we're replacing are actually in pretty good shape. So they're going to Mr. Kabler, and he's going to be distributing them to the city. So cool. we don't have to buy any more cars. That's good. That's good. So we're, 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 cool. we're working together. I was just wondering if we were expanding, but no, that's good. You entertain a motion? Still good. Move to approve. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 22, consideration and action to award a contract for the purchase and delivery of 10 police patrol vehicles for the Brownsville Police Department. Again, we're excited about this also. This is through Tipitex. Uh, Back in March, you all approved that we purchased 10 police cars. Again, we're purchasing 10 more through federal forfeiture funds, no city funds. And uh, uh, we're just upgrading our fleet and making sure we're getting it going. So uh, we ask for approval on this. this is, go ahead. Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank I you, Commander. Results, I'm Appreciate sorry. it. Thank you. <laughs> it's election night. <laughs> Item 23, consideration and action to request authorization to renew a term contract for paving services. Good evening, Honorable Mayor, City Commissioners. Uh, tonight we're requesting your approval to renew a term contract for uh, paving services to the primary uh, contractor, GNT, company out of Brownsville, Texas, uh, lowest responsible bidder, and the secondary company, RML Hauling and uh, Milling of Brownsville, Texas. The city would like to exercise its option to extend the term of this contract for the first 12 months. The extension at, uh, would be at its original price. Funding is available from the general fund, uh, account number 01-417-745, street maintenance. I have a question. Why do we have a uh, primary and a secondary? We're looking for the, the best uh, price for, for this uh, 
uh, service. Uh, we got one from uh, G&T, which came in at uh, $19.49 $19 a ton. And the secondary came in at uh, $21.99. Uh, I know, but why do we get primary and secondary? Have we used the secondary? Uh, no, ma'am. Uh, we, we have not utilized our secondary only because we've done everything in-house. Uh, usually when we utilize uh, our primary, we've, uh, we've had uh, the option to, to utilize them. And they've been very accessible to us. The primary contract? Yes, ma'am. Of course, we're trying to save the money for the city, too, at that price. When, when this is a renewal, so how much, how many, what was the term, the original term? We're, we're looking, uh, it's, it's a, a one-year contract. We're looking to extend it. We have the option to extend it two more years, but we're looking to extend it one more year. Do I hear a motion? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Um, Honorable Mayor, City Commissioners. Uh, may I, uh, may I oh, read I'm the sorry. item, please? Hello, <laughs> 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 oh, yeah. I want to get out yeah. <laughs> <laughs> item 24, consideration and action to request authorization <laughs> to extend a term contract for type D hot mix for a period of 60 days for the city of Brownsville. Okay. Honorable <laughs> Mayor, City Commissioners, uh, tonight we're requesting your approval of an extension of the term, con term contract for uh, type D hot mix asphalt uh, for the primary uh, company, which is Frontera Material of Elsa, Texas, and the secondary uh, company, which is Upper Valley Materials out of Mission, Texas, uh, for an additional 60 days. Uh, this, this extension of 60 days will allow us to uh, solicit, will, will allow us, uh, the purchasing department and public works to solicit uh, competitive bids for the uh, set uh, projects. Okay, so this is just for 60 days? Yes, ma'am. And that, then you're going to? We're going to go out for, for uh, solicit bids to get a new contract, okay. and uh, hopefully we can get it. Well, we're trying to get it for a year only because the price of oil changes every year, so one year was probably the best. Okay. Your motion? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. <laughs> All right. Thank motion you. Now, 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 now something. <laughs> Wait, you have a second and a third. I want to go see the results, sorry. Motion to adjourn? <laughs> yes. Second. All right, yeah. <laughs> None too soon. Everybody in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Come on, tell me that took you a long time. <laughs>